I just bought and thoroughly tested this $500 gaming PC pre-built and I did it on a company that I have equity in and until this video goes live on YouTube, absolutely no one had any idea what I was up to. Sounds dangerous. It is. Very dangerous. Very. Count me in. I did have to somewhat reveal what I was up to when I found blood in the package for safety issues, but we'll talk about that later. Now, a video like this is certainly a bit controversial, and I have to start with some quick disclaimers because I need you to know that I'm going full out on this review and not holding anything back despite my position at Jawa. Now, for those of you that don't know, I have been working at Jawa for over a year now, and I'm now the head of growth, so I'm in charge of all marketing and content creation for the website and the company in general, and I do have some equity in the company. I would absolutely have a motive to turn this into a positive review no matter what because I want Jawa to succeed and grow, but I'm honestly gonna put that aside for today and give you the most honest review because at the end of the day, this really doesn't have anything to do with Jawa specifically. It's more so about the PC that I have here in front of me and the seller on Jawa that sold it to me. This is going to be extremely beneficial to those of you that are looking to jump into PC gaming with an ultra budget pre-built like this and even for you experienced PC builders because I'm gonna show you what I look for when I review a pre-built like this and provide you with solutions to the problems that I found with it, which I did find some. A video like this can help both types of people buy and sell gaming PCs and even save money when doing it. And speaking of saving some money, today's sponsor, the One Inch Wallet, does literally exactly that as it's a fast and secure non-custodial crypto wallet that you can download on both Apple and Android devices. Now, there's obviously a ton of varying opinions on crypto in general, but one thing I think we can all agree on is that if you do own crypto like I do, then you definitely need to properly secure it because you are essentially your own bank. One Inch allows you to safely and securely store, send, and receive crypto on networks such as Ethereum, BNB Chain, and Polygon. All transactions are super protected as the wallet parses all the call data and the app actually shows you what's happening but in a user-friendly manner that you can understand. And not that it's super important in the world of securing your crypto, but I'm actually a huge fan of the aesthetics of this app. Everything is just so clean and it looks beautiful on your phone. With One Inch, you can also easily import wallets that you may already have, and you can even secure a backup of your wallet to Apple iCloud if you lose your device. Check out One Inch for yourself by clicking that first link down in the description, and big thanks again to them for sponsoring today's video. All right, so this is the PC listing that I bought a couple of weeks ago. It's a $535 Intel i3 10105F and GTX 1060 build, and it's from the seller Gaming Workstations and Services. It's inside the incredibly popular DIY PC Q3 Micro ATX case. We have multiple videos coming soon with this case, so get subscribed for that. And on paper, this is actually really solid price to performance for a pre-built gaming PC. Judging by the full parts list and with the seller nicely indicating which parts are new and which ones are used, I guess that they spent roughly $400 to $425 for the bill. After transaction fees and shipping supplies and all that, that's honestly not a huge profit margin at all, which is definitely a good thing for the consumer. And this is one of the challenges of Jawa right now. There are so many competitively priced and well put together gaming PCs like this one on the site right now. So sellers just can't get away with having super high profit margins if they want to continuously sell on the platform. This is a good thing for the website, no doubt, but as Java continues to grow and we introduce the website to more and more gamers and less of the PC enthusiast crowd like the people that are watching this video, that will hopefully get more of these pre-built sold on the website and then that'll give some breathing room to the people that are selling these PCs for a little bit higher profit margins. Stay with me, this is like my main goal here at Java. As a consumer right now though, there are seriously a plethora of really solid gaming PC options to go with on java.gg and with all the buyers protections and their Discord community, it's easily one of the best places to buy a gaming PC right now on the internet. Once this PC arrived after a few days, I didn't use my real name or address to keep my identity hidden by the way, the first thing that I noticed was that the fragile stickers they used are actually better than the ones here we use at ZTT. These are humongous and on every side of the box, looking great so far. Now the seller did choose to not use a double box option, which is definitely preferred, but rather they actually reverse the original case box so it's inside out and it actually gives the package a cleaner aesthetic look and hides the fact that you have a gaming PC sitting on your doorstep. I've never seen someone do this before, so I like the innovation here. The other unique thing that I saw was that they did use the plastic corner protectors that I'm always preaching about on Amazon, but rather than putting them on the outside corners like we do, they actually put them on the inside foam pieces that are protecting the build. I'm not 100% sure which method is more useful in protecting against the impact of a drop, but I love to see that these are in here, and it's a great first impression when you can tell that the seller put real effort and money, by the way, into securing the PC during transit to the customer's house. 
house. And inside the build, that theme continues. This was perfectly protected with one big expanding foam Instapack, and then they filled the gaps with extra bubble sheets. We're actually starting to use that method here at ZTT as well. We used to use two Instapacks for every single build, but we discovered with these smaller micro ATX cases that two of the expanding foams would sometimes put extra pressure on some of these parts like the CPU cooler tower. So I think that going with one Instapack and the rest bubble sheets is the way to go. And that's what we're doing as well. You also save money by dropping to one Instapack per build. So I think this is the route for most PC sellers other than when they're selling massive full-sized ATX cases. Now, one small negative thing that I noticed was that the power supply was switched to off and I would highly recommend shipping with that on. Before we started doing this, we would get a ton of customer service emails saying that the PC wouldn't boot up because first time PC gamers don't necessarily understand that they have to look for the power supply switch. So it's definitely worth explaining that to them. Same concept with the HDMI and DisplayPort connectors on motherboards. We like to tape them off so people don't use them instead of plugging it into their graphics card. It sounds simple to us experienced PC gamers, but first timers don't understand that they won't get any video when plugging directly into their motherboard and it saves the customer service email. Taping or blocking these off and turning the power supply switch to on and explaining that should be in your quick start guide. And speaking of which, I was definitely disappointed to see that there was no form of quick start guide or any sort of documentation. The only thing in here was the Jawa invoice, which doesn't help me out at all because that's all saved on my Jawa account anyway. A quick start guide is a great place to explain to first time PC gamers where that power supply button is, how to get connected to the internet, your warranty or return information, how to configure your RGBs and things like that. The other thing that disappointed me and honestly kind of scared me to death was that this piece of foam that was shipped inside the PC case is covered in blood, or at least we thought it was blood we had to get some clarification. Now, since shipping a blood cover gaming PC would certainly instantly turn this review score down to a failed, I decided it was best to contact gaming workstations and services first and ask them if it was in fact blood or if it was something else because you just never know these days. As a parent, for example, I have full sympathy for anyone that's trying to get something done next to their kids. Maybe they were building this PC and their kid was next to them using red color paint and they accidentally got it on here. I have no idea what happened. So without revealing my undercover review operation, I sent them a message and they quickly responded saying that they were so sorry and they must have used a piece of foam to clean the nozzle of a spray paint can when they were custom painting a GPU. The GPU looks pretty baller by the way, not gonna lie, but this GPU isn't the one that's in my build just for the record. This is definitely a tough one because I do genuinely believe them and it's mostly because of this perfect circle pattern right here which does look like a nozzle, but at the end of the day, this is still a huge screw up from the seller. Even if it's not blood, as a PC seller or seller of literally any product on the planet, you absolutely cannot ship your customer something which looks extremely similar to blood. It's just not a great look. The only thing that I'm thinking of when I see something like this is first, how did this initially happen? But then also, how did they overlook this getting into the box that my PC came in? And then what else did they overlook when building my gaming PC? Let's find out. After the fake bloody unboxing process, I then did a full visual inspection on the PC to see what I could find. The first thing I noticed, hilarious that this is where my eyes went to first, by the way, was that there was a gray and white cable extension on the GPU, which looks great, but no no extension was used on the motherboard's 8 and 24 pin cables. I've actually never seen someone do this before, but it was only then that I noticed that this is actually how the PC was listed on Java in the pictures, so the seller didn't do actually anything technically wrong, but I'm not 100% sure why they're doing this. I guess if you can find just these 8 pin connectors instead of the full extension kit, then you could save a little bit of profit on that, but in my opinion, that's not worth doing at all. I've always said that aesthetics will help sell gaming PCs and it's worth the slightly lower profits, so I personally would have liked to see all the extensions, but again, the seller clearly showed this in the pictures, I must have just missed it. Everything else inside the build looks great though, and I was very impressed with the cable management and overall aesthetics of the build, especially for the budget price. The cables were all tightly pulled and organized in the two-chamber design in the back and looks professionally built. The only thing I was really questioning was the power supply, and honestly, I can't figure out if it's a perfectly acceptable for this build Tier C Raid Max Cobra Power, or if it's a Tier E, aka avoid at all cost unit. The reason why I'm confused is because on the PSU tier list, the Tier C Gold Certified product says 850 watts or more, but ours is only 800 watts. The only other Cobra Power unit on here isn't the one that we have listed, which is at tier E, so ours isn't really shown on this list. The other reason why this is concerning is because the seller listed that this is a used Ooh. power supply, so this becomes even a bit more risky. Now, us experienced PC flippers already know that the power supply market is just awful right now, so no matter what, for a $500 pre-built, you're extremely limited with your options right now. I don't necessarily recommend someone buying and selling a gaming PC with a 
used power supply, but I'm not 100% against it either in today's market at this price range. If someone can provide clarification on this model specifically in the comment section though, that would be much appreciated. I'll heart that comment so everyone can see it. And speaking of the comment section, just like I did with my last undercover review where I bought a Toasty Bros PC, I'm gonna pin the comment down below if gaming workstations and services decide to comment on this video at all. That way it doesn't get lost and you can see their exact rebuttal, feedback, or whatever else they have to say about my review. Again, that'll be pinned down below. Last time the Toasty Bros actually dropped you all a little discount code, which was a nice touch, so make sure you head down there to see what they say. Moving on though, it's time to boot up the PC and see what we're dealing with finally. The first thing during our initial boot up phase that we noticed is that the seller decided to config the PC with sysprep, and this makes it so that whenever the customer first fires up the PC, they'll have to go through the initial Windows setup. Sorry, I forgot to record this part. If you bought a laptop from somewhere like Best Buy, this is actually how you would see that laptop for the first time. You'll have to go through all of those annoying Windows prompts and create a user and all that. So I'm not 100% against it, but there are some problems when you configure a PC like this. With sysprep, the seller loses a bit of control as to how the PC will be configured for the customer. And since a lot of pre-built customers are people that aren't too savvy with gaming PCs, this is why I personally don't go down this route. For our builds on zttbuilds.com, we like to get the operating system fully configured and ready to go with all the latest drivers, Windows updates, and any RGB software that the customer may need. With this method, I 100% know that the PC is game ready and I know they won't have any issues at all. We actually ran into a somewhat major issue with our build because of this. Our LAN and ethernet driver wasn't actually installed when it arrived. And without having built in Wi-Fi on the motherboard, we actually couldn't connect to the internet at all when we got this PC. Now here in the studio, we obviously know that we can use one of these USB to ethernet adapters or use a USB Wi-Fi dongle. But again, an inexperienced first time PC gamer won't know what to do in this situation. You can also chalk this up as another reason to include a quick start guide. After that issue was addressed, and we got it installed, we booted up to the BIOS and noticed that the BIOS version wasn't updated at all either. This is something that I recommend all PC flippers do with every single build because new BIOS updates will allow the customer to upgrade to a newer CPU generation sometimes, like with our build today, and sometimes they also include performance and stability tweaks and fixes. As a PC gamer, we don't necessarily need to update our BIOS every single version all the time, but as a PC seller, you absolutely should update that BIOS before you sell the PC. Other than that though, everything else was smooth sailing and I like what I see. We fully stress tested the entire rig and temperature wise, everything stayed nice and chilly. The GPU only ever got up to a nice 69 degrees and the Intel i3 10105F only ever got up to 62. For performance, everything looked great as an ultra budget pre-built gaming PC and we got good enough numbers for someone that's looking to jump into PC gaming on a budget. In Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 using 1080p and minimum settings, but with a 90% resolution scale, we got an average of 64 FPS. Fortnite in 1080p Pro settings got a very solid 155 FPS, so you definitely could still utilize a higher refresh rate monitor with this build. Rust in 1080p medium settings got 80 FPS, but excuse the poor gameplay, no one here in the studio plays this game. And even Hogwarts Legacy, which is a tough one to run, got 67 FPS in 1080p with low settings. And just like normal, we ran a couple of 3D Marks Time Spy runs and we got a score of 4,102, which calculates out to a pretty solid price to performance, especially for a pre-built. Here's the rest of the games that we ran. And again, we just got very solid numbers around the 1080p medium range mark. The Intel i3 10105F and GTX 1060 can definitely still kick it in 2023. However, However, the one thing you gotta realize is that these three gigabytes of VRAM are definitely becoming obsolete and it's just not gonna last much longer even in 1080p. So many games these days are utilizing more and more VRAM even in 1080p, so this isn't the type of build that you'll buy and it'll last for years and years, but that's not really the intention with such a budget price. The 1080p gaming experience is great right now and that's all that matters sometimes when you're limited on your budget. Overall, despite the few shortcomings that I explained in depth, the overall purchase of this build is still pretty solid and I would recommend this seller if you're hunting for a PC on Java, but I would like to see some some improvements from the seller and maybe some of you PC flippers watching this video. The first impression when unboxing the build is super important, so please make sure everything is clean and blood free inside the box. A quick start guide along with turning on the power supply button and blocking off the motherboard's video ports will cut down on customer issues and updating your BIOS before shipping the PC is mandatory in my book. I did really enjoy the price to performance and minimal upcharge on this PC though. It performed great with no real issues in terms of the gaming experience out of the box. And this seller also has an absolute ton of options always available on Java. They've got you covered no matter what your budget is. And as a reminder, be sure to check out the pinned comment down below to see if gaming workstations and services has any feedback for me or explanations as to why they did anything. And for everyone else, drop a comment down below about which seller on Java or just website in general you wanna see me review next. I'm actually really liking these undercover videos, so I wanna keep making them. And as a shameless plug, I will be selling this PC over on my website, just like we do with every build that gets featured in a video. We'll be selling this one for probably just like 300 bucks or so on my next July 1st restock. And if you can't wait for that, we do always have our restock builds available. And those all actually just got freshly updated with a new version and higher end performance.
performance parts and we didn't raise our prices at all. And if you wanna see my last undercover video where I did the same exact thing but with a Toasty Bros PC, then feel free to click the video that's on the screen now.